So if you've come from part one of this video series, you probably have a pretty good general idea of how to use cash secured puts and covered calls together to run the basic wheel strategy. And while the basic strategy itself is a solid one that should help you make better trades, we have some important modifications that we've added to help you make more money while taking on less risk, which will result in you finding yourself making winning play after winning play. These three modifications are manual assignment, position sizing, and covered strangles. So let's jump into how all these work together to run the full strategy that we like to call the HT wheel. Welcome back to the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money. All right, so let's get into the first main difference, which is manual assignment. So right here, we have the extrinsic value calculator, which we use to help us decide whether we should close or keep rolling with a call or put that is deep in the money on a play that we're running. Extrinsic value is the single most important consideration when you're trying to figure out whether or not you should keep a play that you have open going. So when we're looking at this, we're going to use ticker SAMA as an example. We've got it set up right here. You can select call or put as kind of an aside right here. We're going to have this available, hopefully in the form of a web app for you guys to be able to use to help assist yourself with some of the trades that you're using. So you could run a similar analysis and decide whether or not you should keep a trade open or if you should close it. So going back to the example ticker SAMA, the stock price, as you can see right here, is $13.01. The strike price is 12.5 that we sold on the call and the option price right here is one dollar and ten cents so according to our extrinsic value calculator that's 59 cents of extrinsic value remaining which means all else equal as long as this stock stays above 12.5 which it has a pretty good cushion to do so we'll collect an additional 4.53 percent return and as of the time that we're filming this right now, this is really only three days away from expiration. So collecting a 4.53% return over three days is phenomenal. And this is definitely the play that we're going to want to keep open. But this is kind of looking at it a little bit backwards since the wheel goes from selling cash secured puts to selling covered calls. So looking at a covered call like this is just kind of going about it in reverse order. So let's reverse back to the top of the HD wheel where we talk about selling cash secured puts. So we'll get this out of the way and use an example of what we call stock A here, which is trading at a 16.95 price. So let's switch this over to our put on the calculator, a 16.95 share price, 18 strike put that we sold with the $1.05 premium. And while this doesn't go into the calculator, for purposes of the example, we received a 54 cent credit on this hypothetical put that we sold. So when you look at the extrinsic value calculator, there's no more extrinsic value because if you take the strike price and subtract the option price, you get $16.95. So there's no more remaining extrinsic value. There's no more advantage or edge that we get from selling this option and continuing to hold it. So this is really a green light for us to close this position out. And we're going to do so through what we call manual assignment. Now, if this option right here were at 1.3 or something like that, and there were 25 cents of premium left and a 1.39% return over a day or two is honestly a pretty solid return so you might want to let that keep going but even if it gets down to 1.1 something like 1.07 which is a little more realistic you'll see maybe two cents of extrinsic value left on an option uh, that is not a huge return for a day or two of time so that's another situation where you want the green light and back to our example where we had literally zero cents of extrinsic value this is really when you want to dive into that manual assignment option so from a numbers perspective, let's take a look at how this looks. So with automatic assignment, we know that we would be assigned shares by our broker over the weekend for $18, which means that we would pay $18 a share for 100 shares, which means that we paid $1,800 for those shares. We received a credit up here of 54 cents, which for 100 shares, we'll do the math right here really quickly is $54. So the net amount paid is going to be the $1,800 minus the $54 credit for $1,746. And we know again that that's 100 shares. So our basis is going to be that net amount paid of $1,746 divided by the 100 for a $17.46 basis. Now that's what happens if we just don't do anything. We let these puts expire in the money and we get assigned the shares by our broker, which will show up in our account on Monday morning. So let's look at the manual assignment option. Why would we want to do the manual assignment option? Well, sometimes it's beneficial if we don't wait until Monday morning to get the shares. If we could close out a trade on Friday, Thursday, or Wednesday of the week of expiry, or even before that, when there's no remaining extrinsic value, we'll get the shares in our account and we can go ahead and move through the wheel process and start selling covered calls, which allows us to collect more premium and more premium means more profits. So we love the manual assignment option when there's little to none extrinsic value left on the puts or calls that we've sold. So for this example, with the puts we sold, what we would do is we would just close out the put that we hold and go buy the shares in the open market. 
So looking at that from a perspective of closing out the puts first, we received a 0.54 credit, which we already know is $54. And we would pay $105 to close out that put, which is just that $1.05 premium times 100 shares. So while we have lost a little bit, and that's how it works when you sell a put and the stock goes down, there's really a net effect of 50 and change, $51 in here. So the shares, again, we're gonna go into the open market, but instead of being assigned them for $1,800, we're actually gonna get them for $1,695 since that's the 100 shares at the market price of 16 at 95, meaning that our net amount paid is gonna be the amount that we paid for the shares minus the credit that we received from the put plus the debit that we paid to close out the put entirely, which gives us 1746 net amount paid, which we know for 100 shares when you divide it by that, is gonna give us the same exact basis of $17.46. So from a numbers and dollars and cents perspective, manual assignment effectively gives you these shares at an identical basis. And the only difference is that you get these shares a few days in advance so you can take advantage of the call premium that's on the table and start selling calls a little bit sooner and collect more premium. So when you have little or no extrinsic value remaining, it's really a no-brainer for you to go in here and do the manual assignment option. So this is the first big part of the HT wheel that is a little bit different than what the typical wheel suggests. The typical wheel would just tell you, take assignment, wait until Monday, sell covered calls. But for this one, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that there's no extrinsic value left on these puts near expiration. And we're gonna jump into manual assignment, take the shares early and start to sell covered calls. So as we go through this video and run through the HT wheel itself, we're gonna run through an example of a trade. And this isn't really actually a hypothetical trade. It's actually a real trade that we ran with ticker SPCE, which is Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. So we have this put in here. We're gonna track it on this spreadsheet right here as we run through the video. We sold 10 puts, we got a 54 cent credit, we closed out for a debit $1.05, and then we swooped the shares off the market for $16.92. Right now at this point, we're sitting on a $510 loss, which is a 2.8% loss, but that's okay because when we first started this play, space was at $18.40. It actually had a super significant drop during the week that we sold the puts. It decreased 8.04%, which is a really, really, really steep drop in one week time. But with these strategies and the HT wheel that we have that we can employ, we're gonna rebound from that. So let's go through and look at the rest of the steps of the HT wheel, highlighting the second and third points, which are the covered strangles and the position sizing, which is something that deviates a little bit from the standard wheel, but is something again that we feel, similarly to manual assignment, is something that gives us a big time advantage when we run this strategy. So before we go any further, let's take a step back really quickly to orient ourselves and talk about where we are here on the HT wheel flow chart. We first sold cash secured puts on SPCE. The stock dropped, so we didn't get to collect max profit and start over. But what we did do, though, was take advantage of the manual assignment option mentioned here in order to take ownership of the shares early and get a head start on step two here, which is where we sell covered calls and add cash secured puts in what's known as a covered strangle. This step involves a discussion of our last two bullet points that we had up here. So let's address the position sizing aspect of this first before we get into the advantages that the covered strangle provides us with. So here we are back in the spreadsheet, and let's say for purposes of this example, we're comfortable allocating $34,000 to the trade. Now, that doesn't mean that you needed $34,000 to get into a trade like this. This is just strictly for the purpose of an example. A lot of these plays require significantly less collateral, so don't let that turn you away from anything right here. But again, for purposes of the example that we're about to run through, let's say we are comfortable with allocating $34,000 to this position that we are running as part of the HT wheel. So we know from previously in the video that our original position was 10 contracts that we sold at an 18 strike. We know from our cash secured puts video that that ties up about $18,000 in collateral. And since we're comfortable allocating $34,000 of collateral, we're using 52 to 53% of the collateral that we're comfortable allocating to this trade. So if we look back to the HT wheel diagram, the recommendation is that you use 50 to 75% of the collateral that you're comfortable allocating on this first step. Since we're at 52.94% after this first step, that means we're a little bit on the conservative side. But the reason that we did that is because Virgin Galactic, ticker SPCE, is a little bit more volatile of a stock. So if the stock dropped pretty quickly, as we saw earlier in the video, it did drop pretty quickly. We wanted to have a little bit of wiggle room as far as averaging down as we go through and run this strategy. So jumping ahead a little bit, what is a covered strangle? We're gonna get a little more in depth in the next part of this video series. So typically we get these shares assigned, we'll sell a covered call. A covered strangle is if you add a cash secured put in addition to it. So it's referred to as a covered strangle because you have a call sold and a put sold. So you have shares and an option on both sides of those. So that's what a covered strangle is, which means we're gonna have to sell some more cash secured puts. So what did we do? A little bit of a spoiler alert, looking ahead to how this trade actually played out. We sold 10 contracts for a $16 strike. 
which tied up $16,000 of collateral, which put us right at our max usage. So it was really spot on. And the way just you want to evaluate this is when you're looking at the different strikes, there's all sorts of different opportunities and different strikes you could sell. But if we looked at a 17 or if we wanted to do an 18 strike again, that would put us a little bit over our collateral allocation. So we just dropped it down to 16. We're right on the number. The amount of capital that we have deployed on this trade is exactly what we're comfortable with. and We're ready to move forward. So as we keep going, if you are assigned on this second position, what we say is you could either, depending on what your break even and profit and loss is looking like on the trade, you could either sell an additional strangle, which would put you a little bit over your percent of uh, capital allocation, but in some cases that's okay. Or you could just stay steady with these two positions that you have open at the same time and just continually sell covered calls. Either option works and it's entirely up to you. It's really important to do what you're comfortable with. So that's kind of a good overview of position sizing and how it works in the context of our strategy. So all that falls under the category of things you need to think about when you're getting your play started with the HT wheel. To recap quickly, we followed step one by selling cash secured puts, used manual assignment to our advantage to acquire shares ahead of schedule, and reviewed position size concepts that will help prevent us from over leveraging ourselves off the bat in our position. So that's all we have for this part of the HT wheel video series where we discuss starting the trade off. And the next video in the series will discuss how we successfully manage and exit a position in the HT wheel. We're hoping to have that posted soon, but in the meantime, give us a follow on our other social media accounts and be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with our content as it comes out. Until next time, this has been the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money.